Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. Why am I smiling today? Well, I'm I'm kind of stoked because one of my favorite websites called Clean Technica has just featured one of my videos on the BYD EA1. Thank you, Clean Technica. I really I'm really stoked to see my video on your channel. So I'm going to put a link in my video description here, guys, to guys and girls. Sorry, once again to the actual article on Clean Technica. Now Clean Technica is a website all about renewable energy, sustainable energy, about EVs, Tesla news, not so much, but there is some on there. And I think it's one of the better quality websites that doesn't publish clickbait articles. And there's a lot of clickbait articles on websites like Inside EVs. There's even a fair bit on electric.co. Whereas I really think Clean Technica is one of those websites where you see the headline and you actually get, you get what you think you're going to get. So the writer of this article, his name is Paul Foss. I think that I think that's how you pronounce it. F-O-S-S-E. Now, Paul has been a software engineer for over 30 years, first developing EDI software, then developing data warehouse systems. Along the way, he's had the chance to help start a software consulting firm and do portfolio management. In 2010, he took an interest in electric cars because gas was getting expensive. In 2015, he started reading Clean Technica and took an interest in solar, mainly because it was a threat to his oil and gas investments. You can follow him on Twitter. I'll put a link in the description below and I'll put his Tesla referral code in the description as well. So the article is why I think the new BYD Dolphin will convince millions to go electric. And I just opened this article. I had no idea that my video was there. And all of a sudden, I started reading it and I realized my video was embedded in the page. Thank you, Paul. Now, there's a paragraph at the top that says, this article was inspired by the recent YouTube video above by a relatively new channel called The Electric Viking. Thank you for the shout out. I appreciate that. Now, this channel from Australia has only been around six months, actually a bit less than that. It's about four months. And he says, I've been following them for a month or so but they have some of the best English language coverage of the electric vehicle market in China that I know about. I highly recommend you check them out if you are interested in Chinese EVs. And if you aren't interested in Chinese EVs, you should be because you can learn a lot about the global EV market, even if you have no interest in China. That is very true. In this article, I'm going to tell you why I'm so excited about the BYD Dolphin and give you quality links if you want to learn more. So, I totally agree with Paul. The BYD Dolphin will change the economic global EV landscape in a number of ways. One, it's going to be the first mainstream EV hatchback that will be really, truly affordable and high quality. It's not just a cheap EV. There's over 400 EV makers in China. Some of them produce good stuff. Most of them, so-so, quadricycles, really budget type vehicles that don't have the same kind of heritage of BYD. You might be saying BYD heritage, what are you talking about? Well, actually they've been making cars for 20 years and they've steadily gotten better and better. Remember the CEO of BYD bought a new S class nearly 20 years ago, drove it to the factory and said to his engineers, take it apart. And they looked at him and thought, are you insane? That thing's worth $200,000. We can't just, he got his keys out, scratched the side of the car, and said, well, it's damaged now. It's not new anymore. Take it apart and re-engineer it. Now, obviously, BYD didn't quite re-engineer it, but this is what they do. They take apart cars, they look at the components, and they try to re-engineer them and make them better. And if you look at the blade battery that's going to be in this vehicle, with its 800-volt technology, its lithium-ion phosphate battery technology, which basically doesn't set fire, Pretty much no matter what you do to it, they've driven over it with a truck, pierced it with knives, and it doesn't set fire. And it will last for over 1 million kilometers before you even see 80% battery degradation. Now, that is the kind of battery I want in my car. You'll be able to buy one of these vehicles with a battery like this in it, which is as big as a Toyota Corolla, yet smaller on the outside, for less than... 30,000 Australian dollars or around about 23, 22,000 US dollars. Now, 
Would you want one of those cars? Well, look at the interior of this thing. BYD is actually making some really nice interiors. For the price, this is just a sensational vehicle. And what's happening now is BYD are shipping these off to Australia. They're going to sell them in Australia by the bucket load, I believe, in the UK and soon Europe. Obviously, BYD started selling cars in Europe now. This will follow. Absolutely, this will follow. Let's get to Paul's article. BYD EA1 Dolphin, why it matters. Technically, it's not the Dolphin, it is the BYD EA1, but I dislike that name, so I'm going to use the nickname Dolphin for the rest of the article. The reason I think this car matters is that it could be a car that is a game changer, like the Volkswagen Beetle was last century, and the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y are today. I don't know all the reasons the Beetle was so popular, neither do I. But I think it was a combination of being a reliable and affordable car with a very distinctive look. These days, it's harder to have a unique look since aerodynamics pushes every car to look somewhat similar. But the world is always looking for a reliable and affordable car. Of course, at Clean Technica, we are mostly interested in electric cars since we know they are much more sustainable than gas cars. Absolutely. What does the BYD have going for it? The car uses the lithium ion phosphate battery chemistry that is about 30% cheaper but also uses materials that are more available in large volumes. With all the auto manufacturers in the world suddenly planning electric vehicles, there may be a shortage of nickel and cobalt used to make batteries. Lithium may still be a little hard to get in huge quantities, but iron and, iron and phosphate are common and are mined and refined in huge volumes. So these shouldn't be a problem. Now go to the article if you want to see more about what Clean Technica have written about BYD's plants. They've got some really interesting stuff there. And they also wrote recently about how Tesla is also moving to lithium ion phosphate batteries for the standard range Model 3 and the Model Y. They're already selling the standard range Model 3 in Australia with lithium ion phosphate batteries. They brought the price down as, as a result. And I believe that is a huge change. They brought down the price significantly and they'll continue to do so even more over the next few years. Now, Number two in the article, the Dolphin is the first car to use BYD's new ePlatform 3.0 electric vehicle architecture using BYD's Blade battery pack that is similar to Tesla's structural battery pack. Very, very similar in fact, and maybe Tesla even copied them because BYD actually released this information to the market first. Number three, it doesn't remind me of a golf cart in any way. I love the Wooling Mini EV, it's sub 4,000 US dollar starting price and the ad campaign here and here shows some impressive style, but much of the developed world isn't ready for a car that basic and small. This Dolphin is similar in size to a Golf or Corolla and it won't scare buyers away because of its size. And I think it won't scare them away because of its design. Some of the comments below in the article bag out its design, but I think check out the video here that I'm making, see the images. This car is a good looking car. I think it's a good looking car. One of the reasons is Right, for me, function follows form, form follows function. The styling of the car, just because it doesn't have a long bonnet, doesn't mean it's ugly. The shorter the bonnet, the more practical the vehicle is. There's no point carrying around a large bonnet that does nothing for you. Number four, it has models with over 200 miles of range. And if you need more than that, it uses a leading edge 800 volt charging system that will deliver power to the battery as fast as it can accept it. BYD claims it can charge from 30% to 80% in 30 minutes, which isn't as fast as some competitors, of course, but for its price range, it will only get better over time. Now, I think I agree with Paul when he says that future models will have over 300 miles of range. Absolutely no doubt that will happen based on BYD's product timeline. Number five, BYD is a serious company and not some new startup. BYD was founded in 1995 as a battery maker and has been making cars, gas, hybrid, and battery electric and plug-in electric as well, since 2003. Now, last year it sold 427,000 vehicles, a few less than Tesla, 44% of which were electric at 190,000. Now, I've got to add here that so far this year, BYD has sold more than well over 200,000 electric vehicles already in the first half of this year. So they're way ahead of what, where they were for the entire period of, of 12 months of last year. And at this point, more than 70% of the vehicles BYD have sold this year are powered by battery. Now, Paul says that he first heard of BYD in 2008 when legendary investor Warren Buffett invested 232 million US dollars 
in the company. And at that time, he thought BYD would sell cars in the US soon. It does sell vehicles in 50 countries, but it hasn't started selling cars in the United States, but it does sell electric buses there. Now, the Dolphin might be the car the company brings to the US. On the other hand, there might be so much demand in markets it already sells cars in that it won't have any production available for the US. Now, I think Paul's right on that. I don't think it'll be sold in the US for more, probably four to five years. However, without a doubt, BYD will eventually sell an electric car in the United States. Now, why do I say that? Well, I believe that within five to six years, BYD will be one of the five biggest automakers on the planet. I believe that based on hundreds and hundreds of hours of research on the company, hundreds of hours, hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of hours of research on electric cars and on the car market and where the car market's going. Number six, the elephant in the room is the price, making this car available for pre-order a few days ago at under 100,000 yen, under 15,000 US dollars. For a modern electric car is a seriously, seriously impressive feat. This will open up the electric market to many people that have been waiting for EVs to become affordable. BYD's estimated battery cost of under $100 a kilowatt hour, BYD actually said it's $96 per kilowatt hour, makes it one of the first EVs that is comparable in price to gas cars, not just on total cost of ownership basis, but on also a purchase price basis. Number seven, the BYD Blade Battery Pack has set new standards in battery safety. BYD intentionally abused a Blade battery by driving a nail into the battery, bending it, crushing it, running over it, hitting it up to 570 degrees Fahrenheit, and overcharging it by 260%. After all this abuse, the battery didn't catch fire or explode. Even though electric cars are less likely to catch fire than electric fires, unfortunately, the average person I meet thinks the opposite due to the media sensationalizing EV fires and ignoring gas car fires. And they certainly do do that 100%. It's ridiculous. Number eight, the battery is rated to last for 1.2 million kilometers or 745,000 miles, far more than a comparable gas car would last. Now, the battery will actually last longer than that, but that's at which the point that the battery is reaching degradation in the range of, I think, 70%. Number nine, the car has modern electronic platform with a 12.8 inch center screen and NFC based mobile key. Conclusion. I purchased my first electric car, a Nissan Leaf, with 70 miles of range in 2011 for over 40,000 US dollars. This car is similar in size, has two to three times the range, and has the ability to quickly charge for less than half the price. Whew. This car would be successful in the US if BYD would bring it, but I'm afraid the company will find so much demand in the 50 markets it already sells cars in that it won't export them to the US for quite some time, if ever. As I speak to people about buying an electric car, the three biggest objections are purchase price, range, and charging. Nobody's going to complain about this car's price, and people that want to go electric will be happy with the range and the charging speed. There will still be people that want 500 miles of range and charging in five minutes, and this car won't satisfy those people. But I'm confident there are millions of people ready to buy their first EV that are willing to make small compromises in range and charge time to make that huge leap forward. Disclosure, I am a shareholder in Tesla, BYD, NEO, and Xpeng, but I offer no investment advice of any sort here. Now the first comment to this article says, I can't help it, but it looks a lot like a mini ID3. Even the marketing color is similar. I never even thought of that. I actually agree, it does look a lot like an ID3. Now Richard said, these cars will be the death of the Japanese automotive industry. The mantle has passed to China. These cars and others like it will dominate the streets in Asia, India, and other less developed markets. I agree, the mantle has passed to China. Paul, thank you for your article. In fact, more than thank you for posting my video on your fantastic website. Is the article you wrote. It's one of the most well-written articles that I've seen anywhere. And aside from the fact that you've credited me, which I really appreciate you, honestly, I think it's better than anything I've put together personally. And that's why I've made this video. Thanks for watching the channel, guys. Great to see you. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.